They knew Stratford long before the architects. When shopping malls swamped suburbs and skies were scraped by the city. Pie and mash with sawdust floors and lager tops at Moro's. A history only visible now to those who quietly lived it. But from Watney's to Westfield, there's one remaining constant. Identity, allegiance and belonging to a dream. Cheering on the irons from the bowling terrace, where substitutes could smell your breath and mortals took it away. See, I only knew it as Upton Park, I only saw it in pixels, and I've only ever known Stratford as it is. This gentrified metropolis sprouting through the cracks, but the tail end of the good old days enraptured me in the 90s. No running track for Julian Dix or million pound contracts. I'm wearing my 72 replica, it's the first game of the season, and we're playing away at Bristol, and the game's live on Sky. I check with my fiancé because I'm worried that it's risky, and she's known these guys for years, and she smiles and says, It looks nice. This crisp white shirt beneath a claret and blue flag, in a pub where Billy Bonds beats Billy Bremner. I'm a paranoid imposter, I scratch my chest at the bar, I drown in my surroundings as they clock me from afar. Nowadays, in their seats, they clock soups guzzling popcorn, force-fed this rented Olympic dream. For family-run club see entertainment franchise, and the boys of 86 are a distant, faded bubble. Bobby Moore was the landlord here, and out of it never came. And in some ways, we're cockles and coal, in others, one and the same. So no, they don't give a shit about my shirt. The first thing they do is ask me if the scorer was Sniffer Clark. They reminisce about Revy's team and then take the piss out of Derby. And through Pablo, Bamford, Harrison, I gradually relax. In a wrong pub, on the wrong day, this descends into hell. They say, anyone gives you stick, lad, they'll have us to deal with as well.